Chen Makachi, Bejout, Kumbitech. The people of the Andes have been perfecting the art of weaving for thousands of years. This chuspas is a wonderful example, woven of llama or alpaca hair and traditionally used to carry cocoa leaves. It clearly highlights the weaver's skill. Beautiful. It can't be an alush. It has to be those children. Is something wrong? Huh? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Something is terribly wrong. Every morning, I wake up and everything in my house has been moved. You said something about an alush. Oh, no, you too? Alush aren't real. It's the children. They enjoy tormenting me. You could block the entry. Then they couldn't get in. I tried that. They still found a way in. Maybe I should just move. This jade mask would have been placed on a noble's corpse during his funeral. The artisans were reputedly able to create an almost exact likeness of the wearer. Good day. What do you need? I am certain you will find it useful. You have made an excellent choice, my friend. I am certain you will find it useful. You have made an excellent choice, my friend. The gods favor us both. You have made an excellent choice. I'm always ready to trade. The pilgrimage came to a fork of two rivers and decided to settle. They erected two pyramids and began their new lives as protectors of the box. A little advice. Stay out of the wilderness, friend. Something dangerous prowls out there. This is as near as I ever go. And even then, I make sure not to keep my back to the jungle for too long at a time.
The new methods of agriculture introduced by the cult of Kukulkan have only succeeded in destroying more crops. First, the bee colonies collapsed. Then the cocoa crop failed. The earth is too damaged for anything but corn to grow, and the stalks are flimsy. We must take action, or Paititi will suffer a tremendous famine. This Spanish document relates one of the many stories of El Dorado, the Golden One. When the first Spanish exploration ships returned home with their holds full of gold, the news spread like wildfire, and the stories got more extravagant with each retelling. Rumors of the Golden City gave birth to countless expeditions to the New World. Thirtieth of November, 1603. With a local man as a guide, Lopez, the soldiers and I set out from the city before first light. Just as well, as a terrible flu began to spread through the population, Lopez is convinced this artifact does not lie in the city itself, but somewhere just outside. I asked if it was not somewhat hypocritical to enlist the help of those loathsome people. Do not loathe them, he said, any more than you would these molossers. They are all creations of the Lord our God, as are we. I told him I was stunned to him speak in this fashion, but he took my hands and we prayed. The energy of his faith ran from him to me, until I felt the chains of doubt fall from my heart. Born to famine, raised in rebellion, orphaned but never alone, 
he rises as the sun. Mama says it upsets the waterfall's waka if I play in the cave. She just thinks it's too dangerous, even though there's all kinds of neat stuff in there. The Inca use a combination of freeze-drying and salt to preserve just about anything edible. Chaki and chunos are basically meat and potatoes. Delicious. Hachbal kich kalemech urchi, utel jetelalap olech. Mantach ti yanech tagotoche, mahel bishishiri, al kabil binik tu pach le mehe shulubo, onah kachim betik, kumpelu yotoche. This describes something nearby. A lone sentry stands guard over me and his harvest. This should come in handy. Are all these young people crazy these days? I've seen kids scramble like goats in the heights above the village. Scares me to death. I hope you've grown out of your wild stage, young woman. Uh, not quite yet, I'm afraid. Of course you haven't. But you will. So will these children. They will tire of whatever they've found up there, eventually. <laughs> Mesoamerican people use this stone as a tool for processing grain and seeds.
These ceremonial ceramic jars are used to store corn beer or chicha. The bottom of these apu are usually pointed to aid when pouring into smaller serving containers. This describes something nearby. The youngest of four turns his back on his brothers, unable to speak as I lie in his mouth. Oh my god, this is a penguin lawn ornament, painted and decorated and placed in a location of reverence. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's so incongruous. The locals wouldn't be able to identify the animal it's intended to represent, and they certainly wouldn't be familiar with the material the statue is made from. There isn't any plastic in Paititi. I'd love to talk to whoever did this and learn why, what they think this penguin is. Trying to keep a low profile. I would go. 29th of November, 1603. After dinner, Lopez left the city. I followed, worried he might not return. I found him standing by the riverbank, lips moving as though in prayer. Not wishing to disturb him, I waited. His communion with God must have lasted through the night, and I regret to admit I fell asleep, for the next thing I knew, Lopez stood smiling serenely over me, the morning sun behind him, creating a halo. He helped me to my feet and clasped me in a strong embrace. True Elos, I know where to find the artifact, he whispered in my ear. I can't abandon my post here, and time is running short. It would mean a lot to Queen Unoratu in the rebellion. should be helpful. This describes something nearby. The waters below protect me from the waters above.
During a fierce battle, a man of two bloods throws down his weapons and, speaking with passions, convinces the other warriors to do the same. They follow him from the battlefield into the city, where they behead several merchants whose initial bickering caused the war. once at home, in the well. Papa says it's because there are tunnels filled with water under some houses. Funny, huh? Do you believe that major events in life can be traced back to a single moment? I do. Take what's happening now. Had Amaru and Saidi not fought that day during the famine, and had Saidi not insisted, despite Amaru's wishes, that it should be him who would go beyond the safety of the borders to hunt for the village, Perhaps things would be different today. You see, Amaru felt responsible for his brother's death. I heard him the night they pulled Sairi's body from the wilderness. He was beside himself with grief. I think that was the moment. It broke Amaru. He took complete control of Baititi after that. He wanted to protect us all because he couldn't protect Sairi. <laughs> This describes something nearby. Seven golden birds perched here and there. One escaped to the trees with his treasure, dropped from his talons. I'm waiting for you. This will be useful. Hello. Hello, Ishiki. It's rare to see outsiders in the city. Pisco sent me to speak with you. Ma, Pisco. I like him. You've seen other outsiders? Only one. He was handsome, gentle and kind. We were in love. But our love is forbidden. Outlawed by the cult of Kulkulkan. That's awful. I'm sorry. I was sentenced to death. Tied to the cliffs and left to die. On the third day, I welcomed death. That's when he found me, the outsider. He freed me and treated my wounds. Who was he? I don't know his name. It's been many years, but I still hope to see him again. I often return to the cliffs near the condor nests and collect their feathers. They remind me of him. That's a remarkable story. Thank you for trusting me with it. Thank you for listening, Ishiki. The 
said I'm gonna... Hello? Pisco sent me. Ah, did he? Did you say you were cast out for lying? No, Ishiki. I was cast out for telling the truth. That was my mistake. What happened? Should I say I've never seen an outsider? If no one believes the truth, it never happened. Well, what outsiders? They dress in black and have strange weapons. They hide gold. I told the cult about the gold and the outsiders. They cast me out for lying. Lying? The gold was for them. One day, the cult will be exposed for its hypocrisy. So what do you do now? I lost everything, Ishiki. My position, power, reputation. But it took me losing all that to finally see. I had no purpose, no calling. And you found one? Yes. I serve the future by protecting the past. Queen Unuratu's line are the rightful rulers of Baititi, not the cult of Kukulkan. Everything I see, everything I hear, everything I know, now helps the rebellion. A worthy cause. I send people to steal the gold shipments the outsiders deliver from time to time. They never change the drop-off point. Sounds like you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Thank you for sharing. It was nice talking with you. You too, Ishiki. Now I... Hello. Are you one of the outcasts? Yes, Ishiki. I'm Chaska. I'm Lara. Pisco sent me. Pisco the dead? Sent you to me? Did you lose a game of Patoli? No. A boy Taki lost his dice. I'm trying to win them back for him. Pisco wanted me to talk to all those who've been cast out before he gives them back to me. I'm surprised he didn't try to play you for them. He is. Ah, well, all I can tell you is this. Like Pisco, I was cast out. I lost my job and my position. But not because of an accident, because of something I did and would do again. What happened? Do you have any children? No. Neither do I. I did not receive the blessing of Ishel. But for my mistress, I was the midwife for her three children. I loved them like they were my own, until I lost my position. What did you do? I'm a thief, Lara. What did you steal? A jade necklace. Why? The youngest, Kiara, she saw the necklace while visiting a friend. She took it. They were coming for her. They would have cast her out. She was an only child. I said I took it. My mistress took the necklace from me and threw it on the floor, breaking it. And cast me out instead. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad for me. I would do it again. Kiara's learned her lesson and she has a good life. As for me, I serve Ishel now through my weaving, the way my mother taught me. And my Kiara comes to visit me sometimes. Thank you for sharing that, Chaska. Kiara was lucky to have you. Be well, Ishiki. Maleti le jabob le Hello. Are you an outcast? Yes, Ishiki. Hello. I heard you talking about a white capybara. Oh, not just one. There are many of them. Pisco sent me to speak to all those who are cast out. You're a hunter. I am now. I was once a farmer, but that wasn't the life for me. I felt trapped. Forced to live up to the duties and expectations brought down by my family. I finally refused and went my own way. And a white capybara was responsible? No, Ishiki. I heard of them. One night they assaulted my field. Trampled everything, but I did nothing to stop them. I just watched. They gave me an idea. A herd of these capybara all white. What if I could hunt them? 
What if I could finally get away from the fields? So you did it. Best decision I ever made. My father disowned me, gave the farm to my sister, but that's fine with me. I'm a hunter now. They call me Paimo the White. <laughs> Thank you for the entertaining story, Paimo. Thank you, Ishiki. Rimac. Hello. Hello. You're Lara, aren't you? Uh... Pisco sent you. He did. I'm Moreika. <laughs> that was the second time I heard your name today, Lara. The cultists are talking about you. You're the one who started the cleansing. The one who found the key of Shakshel. I am. Oh, don't feel bad, child. The cleansing was long overdue. It must be decided. Do we continue or begin again? That's not an easy decision. Did you hear that, Rimac? Deciding the fate of the world is not easy. <laughs> I like this one. You're right, Lara. It isn't. And if the cult of Kukulkan decides, they will enslave us all and call it protection. Won't they, Rimac? <laughs> he doesn't talk much. The cult is acting out of fear. Fear of what? Fear of the outside. Fear of change. But the same threats that are outside are in all of us. Fear is the enemy, not change. Change is the only constant. But look at me rambling on, Rimac. The lady must want to buy something to help in her search. Thank you. Enjoy it. Mm, good deal. Enjoy it. Thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you. That's not enough. Enjoy it. Mm, good deal. Good luck, Lara. This garishly decorated fire drill appears to be a part of the new fire ceremony, an Aztec celebration of the new year. It consists of five days of fasting, bloodletting and sacrifice. The fire drill is meant to be placed upon the chest of the freshly sacrificed. It sparks, feeding a large bonfire that ignites the flames of every nearby temple. This one, however, doesn't appear to have been used as the notches are clear of blood. How can these shapes be Incan when they look like airplanes? Oh, I see, they're insects of some sort. Archaeology is a very delicate field of study. You have to put yourself in the mindset of people and cultures who died centuries before you were even born. 
Humans interpret strange phenomena based on what they already know. If the Inca had seen planes, they might have assumed they were some sort of bird. Given that, these shapes may not be insects after all. Some of them look more like fish. Pisco? You've already spoken to them, haven't you? I have. But you still don't see it. They all had hope. You need to do better than that if you want to win the game, Lara. Hope is one thing, but all those who have been cast out have thrived in their new lives despite their circumstances. Even you, Pisco. Well, I am the best Batoli player Baititi has ever known. <laughs> Not bad for a dead man. <laughs> Not bad at all. So again, what did you learn? I learned that sacrifice can make your life better. That you shouldn't be constrained by the legacy of your family. You can find your own path. Love is stronger than death, and you need to believe in something greater than yourself. But ultimately, you can't control everything. It's what you make of your situation that defines you. Well said, Lara. You're sure you're not dead? <laughs> Taki thinks he lost his dice because he was unlucky. But it's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. I see that now. What did you think of Moreka, the outcast? She was expecting me. She seemed to know quite a bit about me. Ah, she knows a lot about everything, Ishiki. She has the most wondrous items in her shop. Artifacts known only to the gods. I saw. You were lucky you found her. She often travels outside of Paititi, gathering inventory. She seemed the most optimistic. Of course she is. We have a saying in Paititi. We all create destiny. We don't choose our circumstances, only our actions. A lesson my friend Taki needs to learn. Well played. Thank you, Pisco. I'll bring the dice back to Taki. Chambelin, I found your dice, Taki. Oh, thank you. Didn't you say Pisco stole your dice? Everyone knows Pisco steals. According to him, you wanted to play a game and you lost. He wouldn't let me play again. Just one more roll and I would have won. Pisco wanted you to know. It's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. Now that I have my dice back, I can practice more. Thanks again, Ishiki. Thanks again, Ishiki. I'm happy to have my dice back.
We found their hidden city easily enough, the coordinates from Trinity being correct. The natives did not trust us, and we entered the city with spears at our necks. There was a tumult against the people. We later learned a cohort of Inca had arrived the month before. Lopez spun a tale of our desertion from the Spanish army, for our hearts could not fathom the destruction they had and would continue to cause, and we gladly exchange any or all of our goods for shelter, if only for a short while. Reluctantly, they allowed us to remain in the city, on the condition we leave our armor and weapons in a small hut outside of the city proper. The men hesitated, and finally we agreed that two of us would remain outside, guarding the gear. Any squad venturing outside Khan must take special precautions in covering their tracks. We're close now, and the last thing we need is droves of tourists showing up trying to be the first to get the perfect selfies in the city. Location found. Hidden. Terrain difficult to traverse. 
seems safe from the stranger's intent on forcing us into slavery. Beware. We've uncovered a wolf den in the area. But then again, maybe that is why you're here. What do you mean? The gods have sent one outsider to hunt another. Very appropriate. Best of luck on your hunt. Mm. 